CataractCoach.com. Should you first remove the pterygium? And a patient with both cataract and pterygium wants your plan. Let's watch a case here. This case is from an anonymous surgeon. This is just a routine cataract case, but you can see there's a significant pterygium extending probably at least two millimeters onto the cornea here. Now the question is, do you do the pterygium surgery first? You do the cataract first, then the pterygium? Do you do them both at the same sitting? What do you do here? Well, it depends on what is your goal of surgery. If your goal is just to clear the patient's visual axis of the cataract, well, then I suppose you can just do the cataract surgery. You don't have to worry about it. But what if your goal is to actually provide the patient a very specific refractive outcome? In that case, you're probably going to want to remove the trigium. Why? Well, the trigium grows on the cornea. What do you think it does? Does it flatten the cornea, steepen the cornea, or have no effect? Well, with a small, tiny trigium, it probably has no effect, right? Like a little pinguecula has almost no effect on the astigmatism in the cornea. A small trigium, probably minimal effect. But as the trigium gets bigger, like in this one, it causes flattening at that meridian. So you want to take off the trigium ahead of time and let the cornea go back to its normal shape. And that can take months. So don't rush it. Now let's see the case here. Oh, radialized natorexis. Come on, young doctor here. Let's get that erexus fixed up here. A little rescue maneuver there. I like that. Get it back on track. So yeah, if you do, do decide to remove the trigium first, remove that, do an autograph, do something nice, clean it up, and then give the patient at least three months to go back to a normal K value. And you can follow the patient post-op in your clinic with serial topographies or serial keratometry to make sure that the K values kind of return back and stabilize. And the key there is you want to have two readings, let's say about a month apart, that are stable with no difference there. So there we go. Here comes the nucleus being popped out of the capsule bag, a little aliquata viscoelastic. Clearly, there are two surgeons who are operating here. You got an attending and a resident, it looks like to me. And so now let's see, it looks like a Nagahara chopper on the left hand, phaco probe in the right hand. We'll see the technique here for the young doctor. But yeah, my advice is to do the trigium ahead of time if you want a refractive outcome. Now, if you have a very dense cataract, let's say you have a patient has this type of cat uh, trigium, two millimeter trigium, maybe causing a diopter or so, maybe two diopter flattening, and the patient has an absolutely brunescent or a white cataract, well, it don't really matter about the trigium. You're not so concerned about that. Get the, get the cataract out. Restore some vision here. But this patient, as you can see, had a pretty modest cataract. The nucleus is relatively soft. And this patient probably wants a pretty good refractive outcome. So in a case like this, I'd say, yeah, you should probably remove the trigium first, let it heal up a few months, then come back and do the cataract. That's the optimal way of getting a great refractive outcome. Now, when would you ever do the cataract and the trigium at the same sitting? Well, again, it's probably that example I gave you, a patient with a really dense cataract. So you have a patient with a dense cataract, big nucleus like a brunescent, white cataract, kind of count fingers vision to begin with or worse. And a patient like that with a big honking pterygium will do them both in the same sitting. And why? Well, you're not as concerned with the refractive outcome. But then you say, well, how do I do the lens calculations? Well, simple. Remember that myopia is a pretty good thing sometimes, especially a low degree of it. So when you do the calculations, look for the lowest K value there in the center. In the center of that cornea, what's the lowest K value? Then do the lens calculations. Therefore, you'll choose a slightly higher IOL power. And then the patient will have an emetropic to slightly myopic outcome, which is pretty good. Remember, what are they starting with? Now, there's, look at that pterygium, honking pterygium there. Not sure why we've got that. There you go, lens being placed in the capsule bag. But that trigium, should you remove it now at the time of surgery? Well, I'd probably wait at this point to go back and do a proper trigium excision with autograft and make it pretty if the patient desires. But nice outcome here, and then something to think about, what would you do with a patient like this with a concurrent trigium? Please leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.